All right, you guys, good morning, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. It is Christmas Eve today, so you guys will see this tomorrow on Christmas. So happy holidays, everyone. Today we're working on the blah by some more. We have some more stuff to get done to this. UPS, God, dude, it's like freaking cold out here too. It's like 25 degrees. Woo! But today we're working on the blah by. We got some parts in. We have more parts getting dropped off today. So UPS is dropping off our new valve bucket for the motor. Once the valve bucket gets dropped off, we can go ahead, get the cams put back in, get the cam carrier put back on and the valve cover. So I'll go over like bucket measurements with you guys and show you guys how to calculate what bucket size you need. I initially ordered one bucket, then went back, redid the calculations, realized it was too big. So ordered the appropriate bucket, had it overnight shipped. So we should get that today. But but before that bucket gets dropped off, we're gonna be doing some fuel modifications on the STI. So I have a wall bureau, I believe it's a 255, 340 fuel pump, I don't remember. I bought a fuel pump for the car. It's gonna be going in that car today. It's not too bad to swap out fuel pumps. I've done it multiple times on the channel before, so we'll probably like zip through the fuel pump install. Now there is, there seems to be a conspiracy going on here that for some reason, someone thinks that this is all like staged and it's like a mock-up. I promise you guys, look, there's literally no one else here but me. I am literally the only one here. There's no one feeding me information. So, now that the conspiracy theory is debunked for the most part, uh, let's get this fuel pump stuff going on. I also have some modifications that I wanna go over with you guys for the STI that I got ordered. Uh, we're waiting on a lot of them to get here though, but we can start today. So let's first start with this guy. So yesterday I went through with a piece of scotch bright, cleaned up the journals that needed to be cleaned up a little bit. I also got all the old gasket maker off of the head. So that way when we go to put the new one on, we can just get it all like sealed up, good to go, slap it back on there. Now, also we got a new Dremel as a Christmas present. So that's awesome, excited to use that. Uh, also got the valve cover cleaned up a little bit and the carrier for the cams as well. So this is all good to go, ready to be sealed up once we get the cams back in the car. So knocked that out off camera yesterday. Here's our fuel pump stuff that we're gonna be installing today. This is like, like I said, a wall bureau, either 255 or 340, I don't remember. I got the install kit with it, so it'll just make life a little bit easier. But modifications for this thing. So I did order some parts. I did order the complete side feed to top feed conversion kit for this car from IAG. I already had two old ID1300s laying around for that STI over there. So I ordered two more ID1300s. So that way we have a full set of well, the, the full like fuel system for this car will be taken care of. New clutch and flywheel has been ordered also. It's the ACT Street Edition track something, I don't know. It's good for like 450 foot pounds of torque. We're not gonna be make, making anywhere near that in this car. Uh, we got the boost controller in yesterday. We got the new bypass valve in yesterday. So we have a lot of parts on the way for this thing. We have a lot of parts here for it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what turbo I can afford for this thing right now. That would be a good setup for the car. So once I get that figured out, I'll let you guys know what turbo I'm going with. But uh, let's get this fuel pump set up installed first. So that way we can knock that out on the list. Now with these older GD STIs, it's really easy. You pop out the back seat, the fuel cover will be right here. We pull out the entire assembly basket. Uh, you're gonna want around like a quarter tank of fuel, which I have in this car. So that way your fuel tank's not completely full. Uh, to get these seats out, there's just two 14 millimeter or 12 millimeter bolts that hold the seat, the bottom of the seat down to the actual car. Super easy. So let me get the camera set up on the other side. We'll start getting all this pulled out, get this fuel hanger assembly pulled out and get the new fuel pump in there. I forgot how much of a pain these are to pull out of these older cars. So we have it out. Uh, here's our fuel pump right here. As you can see, it's ententirely different than it would be on a newer WRX or STI. It's not an actual fuel basket. It's literally a fuel pump assembly here. So we have our fuel filter sock down here. Fuel filter drives fuel up, goes up, goes out, goes to the front of the car, sprays the fuel, does the thing. Now with taking out this fuel pump, it's a little bit different than I remembered. Uh, it's not directly under the back seat, but you still need to pull the back seat out. So you take the lower cushion out, there's two 12 millimeter bolts. You take the upper cushion out, like right here, going all the way across, there's three bolts that pulls the upper seat out. There's two 12 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right here, two on the bottom, these like black crossbars right here pull out, and then that gives you access to your fuel pump right down there, which is just your standard eight millimeter bolts to pull it out. So 
Now that we have the fuel pump out of the car, let's get it swapped out for this new wall bureau that we have over here. Uh, normally I'd use the overhead mount, but right now that table space is literally taken up by uh, absolutely everything for this car and I really don't wanna move this all and get things lost. So I'm just gonna get it knocked out on this little table right here. We'll do it like we used to do in the old garage with the tripod hanging out right above me. Uh, we'll get this fuel pump swapped right out. All right, fuel pump is ready to go back in the car. So this is a Walbureau 255. I had forgotten what fuel pump I even got for this thing. I was trying to get the box to fit back on here, but honestly, it's not needed. It's just the return line for all the fuel that comes back in. It'll just come out of that hose there, like wash over that and then go back into the tank. Uh, this is a little bit fun to fit in here. I can promise you that much. The lower bracket, I ended up bending it down to be able to get the fuel pump in there and then bending it back up to keep it in place. So the fuel pump itself is not going anywhere. It's just the nipple coming off the fuel pump and the nipple coming off this guy right here they're right up next to each other so they are not it is not going anywhere so now that this is all reassembled ready to go i'm going to get this back in the car when you go to reinstall these i'm going to tell you guys this now be very careful of this fuel level sender right here i have broken one in the past on my old 06 sti and it's not fun to have to replace this entire assembly you can get them used for like 150 bucks on ebay uh, but if you don't have to swap it all it's just you just be careful putting it back in so let's get this guy put back in the car it's same process of pulling it out. Uh, we're gonna like finesse it in there, get this guy lined up back on the studs with the lower gasket. Once that's bolted back down, they're all eight millimeter bolts. We'll get everything plugged back in. I'm missing the lower or the upper cover for this guy. So I'm not gonna put the back seats in right now. I'm gonna see how much those cost. If they're affordable, I will order one. If not, it is not the end of the world and I'll put the back seats in. So let me get this guy back installed in the car that we can move on, get the new boost controller installed in the engine bay because it's independent from the motor. Like some of the newer cars are, I'll show you where that goes, but let's get this guy back in. So the new fuel pump is in the car, but after doing the fuel pump, it only furthers my confusion because that's an OEM fuel pump that we just pulled out of the car. Uh, that only further confuses me because why do we have a semi-built motor with a stock? I don't even know what's happening anymore, uh, but we got that taken care of. We now have a Wall Bureau 255 in the car. Um, I'm just trying to clear out like as many of these parts laying around as I can, just because there's there's so many of them at this point. Like all of this is just garbage. A uh, little hose can clamp, keep that. I'll probably use that at some point. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so all that's in the garbage. I'm gonna just run through, put the back seat back in real quick. Uh, I'm gonna order that fuel pump panel cover uh, tonight and then when, whenever we get it in, I'll just pull out the back seat again to put it in properly. So let me get that put in. Then we'll get the new boost controller thrown in the car, which is just a Cobbs three port, which I believe is this box. There's just so much stuff in here. I'm just trying to clear out as much of it as I can just to, uh, just to make our lives a little bit easier. So let me get the back seat in and then we'll get that knocked out. Back seat is back in and looking beautiful. So UPS just dropped off our new valve bucket. So super excited for this. So we can actually get the cams back in the car. So let me run through the process of showing you guys how to get all this stuff in. I wanna talk about measurements with buckets also, because here's our old valve bucket that uh, was a little bit too big. Here's our new one. I'll show you guys what the major differences are between these ones after we get this one in. So. Let's go over to our heads. Let's start doing head stuff. So UPS was kind enough to drop off our new bucket. So this is our 484 bucket. The old one was a 496. The only difference is in millimeters. We'll go over sizing of buckets here soon. First of all, get this thing lubed up. I'm just using some like Lucas assembly lube. I'm just gonna get a little bit on the top of the bucket and then uh, it's like frozen. Oh, and it's coming out the sides. It's coming out everywhere. That's what he said. Oh, it's coming out. Oh, it's sticky. Oh, it's everywhere. So let's just lube all this up. Do not drop it, Tanner. Do not drop the bucket. Get some on the inside of the bucket. God, it's like Spider-Man just jipped everywhere. Oh, how lovely. And the whole reason that we're lubing this up is just so when we go to like first start the car, everything is like nice, lubricated, good to go. So that way we're not having like serious metal on metal contact. So let's just get you in your home now, bucket. Go in your home. There we go. So now that we have the new bucket in, we have a little bit of assembly lube on it. I'm just gonna pop off this top cam carrier, get the intake cam put back in and get it mocked up to where it would sit, where we would measure valve lash. If valve lash checks out, we're good to go. My hands are super slippery now and I can't actually grab anything. There we go. I'm just gonna hand tighten down this 
cam carrier so it stays in place. So the last thing that I want is a cam to fall out. I would be very upset with a broken cam. Get these guys just hand tight, do them evenly. So just like before, everything should be six thousandths of an inch. We're six thousandths there. We are not six thousandths there. What the hell? We are not six thousandths. What are we? So we went through double checked valve lash on this. It is now at 0 0.0055 instead of 0 0.001. So we are within spec for this valve now. So hopefully that fixes our ticking. I think what was happening is when the motor started to heat up, the backside of the lobe of the valve was hitting, or the backside of the lobe on the cam was hitting the bucket, creating that ticking noise. So I'm gonna go through here, get this re like resealed up. Uh, the spots that you want to hit up are both of these cam carriers right here. You just want to put a little bit of sealant on them uh, on both sides of them. We'll get those torqued down. Get a little bit of sealant on the actual cam cover that goes here just to keep the cams in place. So first up, I'm going to get these ones tightened down a little bit with the cams in place just to hold everything down. I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube on all of the journals in here just to make sure that we are lubricated on our first start. So that way we're not running this thing dry because that is the last thing that we want to happen. So uh, let me pull off this guy, this guy, and then we'll get both cams set in after I get everything lubed up. We'll get everything sealed up and then we can get the valve cover and the spark plugs put back on today. I'm gonna kick myself in the nuts every time I have to buy one of these valve buckets. So valve last changed after I torqued everything down, uh, which is why you always wanna go through, make sure that all your measurements are good. So after we adjusted valve lash, uh, the bucket's still too close. It is better than what it was before. Remember, we were at 0 0.001 on this lobe. Now we're at 0 0.004. So we retook measurements, we recalculated everything. Let me get all this stuff out of my way. So after going through, Melanie was my scribe, after going through and actually doing all the measurements, so so what you want to do is you take the initial valve bucket reading. So this is the old bucket that was 496. On the inside of the bucket, if I can even get the light to show on it, there's a number in there. This one is 496, it's 4.96 millimeters. It's from that little nipple inside of the bucket to the face of the bucket right there. So that measurement on that one is 496, but the new bucket is 484. So we do 4.84 in millimeters, and then we take the inch measurement, we convert it over to millimeters. That is our actual reading. So that's our actual valve lash right now. It's 0 0.004 or four thousandths of an inch. Converted to millimeters, it's 0.1 you subtract that from the measurement you actually want. So we need a valve lash of 0 0.006 or six thou. Convert it over to millimeters, that's one point or 0.1524. So what you do is you add the current bucket size to your current measurement and then you subtract your actual lash and that'll give you the actual reading of what you should have. So we have a 484 in there right now. We need a 478. So I just two days shipped one um, from I don't know, flatorious tuning or something like that to be able to get this back together. Uh, I'm not even gonna worry about taking all this apart again. I have to clean it up even after I take it apart. But when you're going through here and you're doing this, make sure you lube everything up. I lubed all like the cam lobes and everything like that. Um, yes, 0 0.004 is better, but it is not the spec that we need. It is gonna throw off the duration and how, how often or when the valve actually opens. So I wanna make sure that I get this right. So that way when we put it back in the car, everything, I'm just super comfortable with it like that. So I mean, it sucks, uh, but measurements change when you torque everything down. It is what it is. I'm not too worried about it. And the next next time we do this, I'll give you guys like the torque values for everything and like the order for torquing everything down. But for now, I mean, we live with what we got. So it's not the end of the world. The bucket should be here sometime next week. Christmas is gonna mess things up a little bit for shipping times, but I'm not too concerned with it. But it's freezing outside. It's Christmas Eve. Melanie and I have some things to do, but I did wanna get you guys a video for tomorrow. So even though our bucket size is still wrong, we are a little bit closer. Um, sometimes, I mean, I'll keep all these buckets because at some point I guess I'll probably need them again. Uh, but I mean, this is just how it goes. Always double check your measurements. I mean, even off of that first measurement that I took with that 496 bucket, that 496 measurement told me that we needed a 484 bucket, which is what we have in there now. And it's still just not right even after it's torqued down. So like I said, I'd rather get everything right within spec and good to go. So that 478 bucket should be here sometime next week. So that way we can get the cams permanently put back in the car. We can get the valve cover back on. We can get everything good to go. I'm still waiting on the cam seals to come in anyway. So it's not a huge deal that I have to wait for the bucket, but oh well. So we got our fuel pump in. 
We measured some valve bucket sizing today, which is always exciting. Uh, but I hope you guys have an awesome Christmas. I hope you guys enjoy your winter breaks or whatever you guys are doing. Uh, like I said, we're gonna, we gotta go out. We're gonna go do some stuff for Christmas Eve. So if you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue, like the seats in the Subaru, black, whatever color it turns. I don't even know what color it turns for people anymore. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet. But with that, you guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, homies.